Hello, I'm Father Robert Spitzer. I was on the Larry King Show on Friday night with um, Stephen Hawking and Leonard Mladenov and uh, Deepak Chopra uh, talking about uh, Dr. Stephen Hawking's new book, The Grand Design. Uh, after the show was over, um, several uh, viewers uh, wrote to me by email and asked me uh, um, uh, personally about several questions that they thought uh, needed more nuance and more elaboration uh, from my presentation um, uh, during, uh, during the interview uh, with Larry King. So um, I thought this is one way of getting the information out uh, to people. And um, let me begin with the first question. Um, the first question was, okay, uh, you talked about uh, uh, Dr. Hawking's first book, Brief History of Time, and his openness to transcendence. And you said, uh, you gave a quote that um, he said at that time that um, what breathed fire, that is to say, what breathed existence into the equations of physics so that they could give rise to a universe they could describe? And uh, that's a really good question. Uh, what did breathe existence? Could the equations of physics have breathed existence into themselves? And of course, that's the open question. Could uh, the universe have breathed existence into itself? And um, uh, in the brief history of time, Dr. Hawking said uh, he was open to a transcendent causation or to something other than the universe having to breathe existence into itself in order to exist. Um, in his book, The Grand Design, he has clearly changed his mind in order to uh, foreclose the very possibility of uh, a transcendent cause or a creator. Uh, he has now made the bold statement uh, that the universe can breathe existence into itself. The equations of physics, perhaps in the form of M-theory, can actually breathe existence into themselves. And he actually claims that the universe can create itself out of nothing and that this explains how we exist as well as the universe. Well, let's see if, uh, if that claim really does get verified in the grand design. Uh, the point is that claim can never be verified under any circumstances. There is absolutely no way that the universe can breathe existence into itself, that the universe can create itself out of nothing, because if you really mean by nothing, nothing, absolute nothing, then from nothing, only nothing comes. Zero added to itself an infinite number of times is still zero. Nothingness accumulated, manipulated in any possible way is still going to wind up being nothing and nothing doesn't do anything. So the whole idea of the universe, while it's zero, while it's nothing, literally breathing existence into itself in order to make itself exist, is clearly self-contradictory. It's never going to work in any scientific system. So how does Dr. Hawking try to justify this? Why does he think that he has done this? He and Leonard Mladenov think they've done it, by, quote unquote, redefining nothing. What they mean by nothing in the grand design is not absolute nothingness. They don't mean zeroness, as it were. They don't mean the absence of everything. What they mean is a very, very low energy state within a quantum field. In that particular case, uh, you can, in a very low energy state of quantum field, you can actually have pair production, you, pair creation. You could actually have things popping uh, out of that uh, state and going back into it again. And, and that's a, a remarkable thing. But that state is not nothing. That state is an existing state within a very dynamic quantum system with very specific characteristics, parameters, and laws that apply to it. It's really something. That's not nothing. 
Look, here, let me give you an example that my uh, friend uh, physicist, uh, uh, Dr. Stephen Barr, gives uh, frequently. Um, suppose I have a bank account and the bank account is now at zero or even negative. The bank account being at zero does not define no bank account. It doesn't define, as it were, nothingness. You see, in order for me to have a zero balance in my bank account, I really do have to have an existing account. And that existing account has to be in an existing bank. Just so with a quantum field. In order to have the nothingness that Dr. Hawking and, and uh, Dr. Mladenov are speaking about, I really do have to have an existing low state of energy so I can have a vacuum fluctuation in an existing quantum field with very much existing dynamic features. So if you get the point, that's not really nothing. And if that's all that Dr. Hawking and Mladenov mean by nothing, then they really haven't proved the contention that the universe created itself out of nothing. All they have done is to show that something can arise from something. And that really isn't that extraordinary. All that is, is to speak about causation as we've already known it in physics throughout the centuries. We've never extended the analysis at all to something coming out of absolute nothing. And if that's the case, if the universe could not, uh, at this point, if we acknowledge that the universe could not have created itself out of nothing, if we acknowledge then that the universe couldn't, while it was absolute nothing, breathe existence into itself to make it something, then the door is still wide open to Dr. Hawking's original question. The door is still wide open to what breathed fire or existence into the equations of physics to give rise to a universe they could describe. We are still quite open to a transcendent creator, point unproven.